Look at this example. Suppose, suppose that S, yeah. Suppose the set S is linearly dependent. That's a definition here, right in front of you. And let me make another simplifying assumption that S actually has only one vector. It's quite a possibility, right? S may be, ha may, may be having one vector. What can you tell me about this one vector? It's a very simple case, right? This, we, don't, we, don't, we don't speak about many multiple vectors. Just one single vector in set of one. M yes, please. Uh, A is zero. Do you agree with that? No, actually, you're right. Yes. The, the vector is zero. And look how you can establish this from the definition, how it is seen from the definition. Definition says, if a set linearly dependent, if the, if the set linearly dependent, it means that I have a number. This time, it's only, it must be only one number here. Look at this, at the definition. Oh, I can't move it right now. At the definition, here it was m numbers, each like a, for each vector a number, but we have only one vector, so it's only one number, which is non-zero. There must be one between them non-zero, but because only one number, so it's, that's the one which is non-zero, such that what happens? Linear combination, that's the linear combination of one vector, equals zero vector. Correct? That's just the definition restated for the simple case of one vector. So how, do, how from, from this line we can infer that the vector actually is zero vector? Well, it's simple. All you have to do, you have to factor, factor this. <laughs> I'm glad I delivered you 30, 10 seconds of fun. <laughs> Again, you just factor this identity with the inverse of lambda. And remember this, the, the fact that lambda was non-zero played the role. If lambda was a zero, you could, you could not possibly factor it with the inverse. There's no inverse for the zero number. But if it is non-zero, you can multiply with the inverse. Multiply is a neutral word, relax. We can multiply with the inverse. And if you just do the arithmetic, you will end up with the vector a being zero. So it turns out that for the set of one vector, to be linearly dependent, the vector inevitably must be zero. What happens if I have a set of two vectors, which is linearly dependent? Let's just try to analyze that. What kind of interpretation of linear dependency, or what kind of form linear dependency takes when you look at only two vectors? So again, if I just restate for you what the linear dependence is, here it is. We have to be able to find numbers. I mean, there are numbers like this. This time it will be two numbers. Here they are. Such that linear combination, and this time linear combination is like so. Two vectors, two numbers, equals zero. And not every of them is zero. So either this one, do I have the other one? Well, it says that here lambda is non zero. It's not specific, it, 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 in general, it might not be specifically lambda. It says one of them is not zero. But because the sort of the, the picture is symmetric, I can always assume without losing any generality that it's exactly lambda, which is not zero. So what happens then? What, we can, what can we say about A and B vectors? Yeah, you, you can say that. But what, what geometrically we can say about these two vectors? They are parallel. That's, if you saw, if, Again, because lambda is non-zero, you can multiply the whole thing by the inverse of lambda, and you can solve for lambda. If you do that, it will be A equal negative lambda, no, the other way, mu lambda P. If you solve for a now, and the only reason you can solve for a because your, your lambda was non-zero, so you can divide by that. If you solve for that, you will end up with this algebraic relation between a and b. And we know this kind of relation geometrically implies vectors being parallel. In fact, you can reverse this chain of implications. You can see actually parallel vectors, two parallel vectors, will always be linearly dependent. And we come to the, this, to this uh, conclusion that for two vectors, the, this very general, very complex concept of being linearly dependent is just basically simply restated as being parallel.
for one vector, linear dependence being zero. For two vectors, linear dependence being parallel. What do you think will happen for three vectors? If I have three vectors in my set, and the set is linear dependent, any guesses? Now, yes. Yes, uh, the, the, the mathematical word for that, I think, called planar, right? Yes. For the for three vectors, for three vectors, statement that three vectors are li uh, linearly dependent, it is the statement that they are, well, I have here the, the statement again, we've got three numbers, such that the linear combination, such that the linear combination is zero, and not all of them are zero. So again, I, for simplicity, I take lambda being on zero. Again, you can solve for vector A in this case, because a lambda is non zero, you can divide by lambda. You can solve for the vector A. You can solve for the vector A. I put here dots. You can fill in these dots, of course. And this kind of relation, if you fill in the dots, this kind of relation, they just means that these vectors are co planar. I think I spelled it correctly. So vector A sits in the plane which is spawned by the vector A, B, and C. So these three examples, they go, to show, they go to show you that actually this linear dependence or linear independence concept, it's a concept of being zero, being parallel, being coplanar, taken to the next level. Again, to the level where you have lots of vectors in the Rn space. And again, for the, for, the, for the case of one vector, two vectors or three vectors, you can easily imagine that in your head because you have good experience with the planes, parallel vectors, 3D, three dimensional space. Whereas for the case of multiple vectors, you no longer have this, this, this abundant experience. And yet, with the case of many vectors, we can do lots of interesting things and they are very useful for the application. That's what we're gonna train our brain or our minds for, being able to handle multiple vectors as easy as we could handle parallel vectors, coplanar vectors, or zero vectors. And that's why we need this general concept of being linearly dependent or independent. 